Today is uh, Thursday, May 5th, 2011. We are in Natick, Massachusetts, and this tape is part of the Morse Institute Library's Continuing Veterans Oral History Project. My name is Maureen Sullivan. Our cameraman is Dan McDermott of Natick Pegasus. We are privileged to have with us today Joyce Tartarini Hubbard. Welcome, Joyce. Thank you so much, Maureen. May I ask you when you were born? Uh, March 25th, 1943. And where were you born? In Boston, Massachusetts, at Boston City Hospital. And uh, where are you living now? Well, right now, we live wherever we are. We do own mm -hmm. a fifth wheel. We sold our home nine years ago, mm -hmm. and now we full-time. Uh, we just travel wherever. I do have a, um, our mailing address is Pensacola, Florida. Mm -hmm. So my mail goes there. We, we have, not, however, have not lived there. You've spent pretty much all your life uh, traveling, haven't you? Yeah, it's, it's in the blood now. Mm -hmm. And of course, uh, marital status, you are married. Yes, I am. And you have two children? I have two children. Mm -hmm. I have a son and a daughter. Mm -hmm. uh, Jim is 40 six and our daughter is 42. They're both in Florida. Okay, and grandchildren? I have two grandchildren. Tr Katrina is, they're both children for my son. My daughter does not have any children yet. Mm -hmm. um, and she's living in Florida also. She just moved. She's in Washington County. Mm -hmm. And our grandson is in Iraq. Okay, and, but before all that, you spent your childhood in Natick. I did, yes. I and what was that like? Totally different from what it is now. Mm -hmm. It was, it was a, I remember it being a smaller community, mm -hmm. really, really, really friendly. And, you know, we could go anywhere and I knew just about everybody. And things are not, they weren't quite as much of a hustle and bustle as it is now. Mm -hmm. And you graduated from Natick High. From Natick High in 61. And that was still when it was a fairly new school, right? It was, yes. And small. I, I saw the new add-ons. It's much larger. Mm -hmm. I used to spend a lot of time at Doug Pond in the summertime mm -hmm. swimming. And I used to walk. You know what? It just amazes me that I used to walk like three to four miles to school every day. And now everybody uses buses. Mm -hmm. And you entered the military just after high school. I did. Uh -huh. And you entered the military with your twin brother. I did, Douglas. And well, Douglas, okay. And why did you two enter the military at that time? Well, I really wanted to go to college, mm -hmm. and there was no way that we could afford it. And I, and I knew what you know. I didn't know anything about scholarships, and I. So I figured if I went into the service, I could get. A, 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 education mm -hmm. and I did actually after I got out of the military okay. and then Kennedy had said you know what see what you could do for your country mm -hmm. so and that's actually the reason Doug Doug went in also for his for the schooling and you know we we just thought we would just see what we could do for the country and you have another brother I do actually Pete has passed away mm -hmm. but he was in the Navy Reserves he went in in 67 shortly after he got out of school. Okay. And what happened to you after you decided to join the Navy? Well, I took my boot camp in Bainbridge, Maryland, and that was, that was definitely totally different from what I had anticipated it would be. Um, and it was really the first time I'd ever been away from home, so it was a little bit scary. Mm -hmm. but, but I had loads, I really did have loads of fun in boot camp. And then from there, the Navy wanted me to be a yeoman. A yeoman mm -hmm. is like a secretary, mm -hmm. and I really didn't want to do that. I, I honestly wanted to go into the medical field, so mm -hmm. uh, we negotiated and they allowed me to strike. Strike is like on-the-job training, mm -hmm. and I went to Philadelphia. I was there for about eight months, and then from there I went to the Great Lakes, that's where I went to school to get my, mm -hmm. my um, corpsman caduceus. That was six months, and then from there I went to Charleston, South Carolina, 
and I was <clears throat> I served in the hospital there, and that's where I met my husband. Okay. Uh, what were your duties when you were in the hospital, at the hospital rather? Uh, when I was in Philadelphia, I, while I worked on the ward, I took care of both the men and the women, um, put IVs in, gave medication, did the bed baths, mm -hmm. uh, whatever, whatever they, they needed to keep them comfortable and whatever the doctors you know, would allow. And then when I, after I graduated from school and I went to Charleston, South Carolina, I did work in the emergency room. And, mm -hmm. and what, what, what's really interesting in the service is that I was able to do minor surgeries and to suture. We had had a couple of accident cases come in and one of the women had opened up her chin in the automobile accident. The, hot, the emergency room was, was really full and because I had been in the core longer than a couple of the others that were there. The doctor had me clean her up and, and I sutured her up and, mm -hmm. and she turned out really, she turned out good. She came out of her coma and she was doing fine. Mm -hmm. And then we had another patient that had uh, fallen. That We had a plant in South Carolina that was a dye plant and he was a uh, retired service personnel and apparently there was some kind of an explosion in the plant. He was way up on top of, of like the gang plant, well, gang walk that he had mm -hmm. to walk on. And when the explosion I interrupted, mm -hmm. he lost his balance and went head first into a, a big old vi of hot dye. And you know, and, and I'm sure it was because of his training because he just, it's like he, he took a swan dive in and, and according to what the other people that had seen it said that he just just came right out, just, you know, like, and then out. And um, he came in with second and third degree burns over all of his body. So we had to put medications on to keep him from, keep his wounds mm -hmm. clean and dry. And, and then we had to turn him on a, on a bed, he got turned like every hour. Mm -hmm. He was in the, he, he just, <clears throat> he amazed me. Cause I was, you know, I was young. I was only 19 at the time. And that man survived, it, it was months, maybe five months that he was, that we were turning him and turning him. But he walked out of that hospital with very few scars. I mean, and it, it was just amazing that he could survive what he survived. Wow. Uh, let's talk about your twin brother for a moment because I understand he was in Guantanamo Bay during the Cuban Missile Crisis. Yes. Tell us a bit about that. Well, he doesn't talk too much about that, but he did say that he, when he was there, um, that it, there was a lot of gunshots and stuff around. He never got mm -hmm. hit. He said that he, uh, you know, he just kind of kept his head docked up ducked, as mm -hmm. that's all he would say. He just, they don't like to talk about, I don't know, none of the men seem to like to talk about any, when they've been overseas and mm -hmm. they've been in any kind of combat. Mm -hmm. I, I just. Yeah. And how long was uh, Douglas in the Navy? He was in for the four years. He went mm -hmm. in, he went in the same date I did, September mm -hmm. uh, 61, and he got out in September of 65. Mm -hmm. And he was in, um, he was aviation, an aviation mechanic. And what did he do after he left the service? He uh, met his wife in Jacksonville, Florida. So he stayed there and mm -hmm. went to school to be a mechanic. Mm -hmm. he, and, and he was a mechanic, he, he was a mechanic for years. Mm -hmm. He had a heart attack when he was 50. So he mm -hmm. um, wasn't able to do it anymore. But from mm -hmm. the time he got out of the military until then, he was a mechanic. Okay. Let's get back to you. You're in South Carolina uh, doing, doing the, uh, not quite a nursing bit because that would have been officer, right? Officer was a nurse. Mm -hmm. Core Wave is enlisted. But, okay. and actually we, 
we were allowed to do everything that they mm -hmm. <clears throat> that they could do, but but um, we just didn't have the rank or the or the income. Okay. Now, how did you get to meet your husband? He when uh, he was in charge of the guards on the gate as mm -hmm. we as we come in, and um, one of the, one of the, when I <coughs> excuse me mm -hmm. when I first arrived. I believe he was on the gate, and, and the guys were giving me an extremely hard time because I didn't look my age. I, I really looked extremely young. I mm -hmm. had an ID card, I had a driver's license, and they, they were giving me a really hard time, so he kind mm -hmm. of enjoyed that. And then um, my, one of my roommates had gone over to the club and had seen Dan, and she kept on telling me, she, she had to meet this really tall, good-looking guy. I, however, did not want to date Marines. When I was stationed in Philadelphia, mm -hmm. I had had, the Marines were just full of themselves. They, you know, they, the Marines just think that they're, they can do anything. And I had, I, had a, I, had a, I had a hard time with a lot of the Marines, so uh -huh. I just dated Navy guys. And I told Pat, I, you know, I'll go meet him, but I'm not dating any, any Marines, none at all. So when we did, she walked us mm -hmm. around because she knew exactly where Dan was. Mm -hmm. and, and when we got to, he was working actually on one of his friend's cars. And, and Dan to this day says, he says hello to me. Now, I do not remember him saying hello. I do remember Pat just, you know, what, well, of course, Pat took a lot of his time, and she was talking to him and just wouldn't let anybody else interfere. And then Pat says, we should go on a date. And I said, yeah, okay, Pat, one of these days we'll go on a double date. Pat had arranged a date with Dan and then with another, another Marine, and we were supposed to go on a double. And I, I didn't commit. I just said one of these days. Well, Pat was my roommate, and I was on the, the 11 o'clock shift, and so we got back to the barracks. I wanted to go to sleep. Pat woke me up every half hour. Joyce, I've got a date set up for this weekend. I said, no, Pat. Well, finally, I was tired. I said, all right, all right, I'll go. So we went. And then the guy that was supposed to be my date wasn't able to get, he wound up pulling duty so he couldn't mm -hmm. be on duty. And the only other Marine that Dan could find to go out on a date had, he'd already had a couple of drinks so he didn't want to go out with me. He wasn't mm -hmm. drunk or anything, he just didn't want to go out with me. He didn't know me and he didn't want to go mm -hmm. out with me. But he knew Pat, so he was Pat's date and Dan was my date. And that didn't go over too well with either one of us, so we had a problem. But Dan just kept coming after, because after, I, I was not mm -hmm. very friendly toward him. And you know, it's really true. If you just kind of ignore somebody, then they're more determined to get to know you. So mm -hmm. he kept calling me and calling me. And finally, we went out, and the rest is history. <laughs> <laughs> OK. So you were, um, when did you uh, get out of the Navy? In July of 63. And when did you marry uh, your husband? April of 63. I'm sorry, January of 63. January we 63. And I got pregnant in April, so I got out in July. And the reason you got out in July 63 was because was married, pregnant. you were pregnant. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you, can, you could be married in the military. Mm -hmm. a, a woman could be married, but she could not have a dependent under 18 years of age. Mm -hmm. The men could, but the women could not. So it was an automatic discharge. All right, and so after the discharge, you're still in South Carolina? Yes. And how long were you in South Carolina? Um, our son was born in February of 64, and we left, it was in 64 that we left. Mm -hmm. So now you're, you've, you've changed from a member of the military personnel to being a dependent, a, a, dependent, a military wife. Yes. What's that, what was that like? 
if the Marine Corps had wanted him to have a wife, I would have been issued in the sea bag. <laughs> and that is really, mm -hmm. it, I understand it is better now. But when I was in the military and, and a dependent, um, women were, and dependents were um, second, almost second class citizens. We, the, the spouse, the husband was the one that had all the control he had. In fact, at one point I had gotten into an automobile accident. I mm -hmm. didn't see a vehicle behind me and I backed into it and, and I didn't know we had a very large truck and it was a very small vehicle. I didn't even hear the bang. And I just went on shopping and came back. And when I got back, <clears throat> the uh, I, other people in the area had seen that I had hit the vehicle. And they knew that when I came back, they knew I wasn't trying to run or anything. Mm -hmm. But Dan was on duty. And a couple of the MPs had come to the house. And mm -hmm. they insisted they would not talk to me. They insisted on speaking to him because he was the sponsor. He's the guy. Mm -hmm. And I finally, after I kept badgering them, they finally did tell me it was because I hit the car. And I didn't know I did. So, and you know, everybody said I didn't know I did, but they did not want to talk to me. Mm -hmm. They wanted to speak only to, to Dan. So, wow. Yeah. So, uh, of course, Dan traveled a great deal. Yes, and did we you did. Tra you traveled a great deal too? Uh, yes, yeah. And my, uh, you had coast. two tours of Vietnam. Where where were your some of your addresses? I was in both times that he went to Vietnam. Mm -hmm. I was in California. Mm -hmm. um, they always shipped Dan to to Camp Pendleton, mm -hmm. and that's where he shipped out of. So the the kids and I always went. We were in. Oceanside mm -hmm. the first time that he went to Vietnam and Vista the second time that he went to Vietnam. And what was it like raising children knowing that you're probably going to be bouncing around every couple of years? Well, the kid, I loved the, <clears throat> the kids were great. They were, mm -hmm. they, they were minded. They were easy to take care of. Um, you know, you just, God created us just to learn to adapt, I guess, because mm -hmm. it was it was my lifestyle. Mm -hmm. It was enjoyable. I got I really got to see so much of the country. And both of our children have said that they were really glad that they did, you know, move that much because they're they've always been independent. Uh, you just learn to take care of yourself and, mm -hmm. and to do and, and family was important to us. Mm -hmm. Now before the interview you were mentioning that you had a chance to re-enter the Navy, maybe as an officer. Tell us about that. Um, when, I, when I was 33, the mm -hmm. service had, by then it, everything had changed so that women were able to stay in the military. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, you know, a lot, of, a lot of the change had come because a lot of us were writing to the Congress and, and it just, you know, it just wasn't fair that they were, we were all in the same military service, mm -hmm. and it wasn't fair that they let the men stay in. So, a, a lot and a, a lot of us were writing, and none of us that had been discharged. I think we didn't realize that everybody was writing, and I think that was the reason that the Congress did change the law. So I did get a letter saying that I would be allowed, if I chose, to come back into the military. Um, I got out as an E3. I had already passed, when I got out, I had already passed the test for E4, and I had already been asked if I wanted to go in, the, the government would have paid for me to go to college to become a nurse, and then I could have re-entered as an officer. However, when I got the paperwork, I would have to come back in as an E3. Mm -hmm. An E3, I think at the time, was only making a couple hundred dollars a month. Uh, and I would have lost all my time in grades, so mm -hmm. I would have had to start from then. Mm. It just, uh, it wasn't worth it to me. The, the civilian job that I had definitely paid more than I would have made. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, so I just chose not to go in. I just told them, no, thank you. Okay. 
you were mentioning the fact that other members of the military were writing to Congress. Did you write to Congress? or? I did. did. I wrote a couple of letters and, and told them I, <clears throat> I didn't think it was fair. Mm -hmm. and, and it's just like, um, you know, it, things were just difficult then. Mm -hmm. they, they, not difficult, but just different. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of the rules were. When I did, when I did get out of the military, I did go to, to college. And as a member of the military, once you, get, once you get discharged, then the government pays for yourself and for your children and for your spouse. They'll, they'll give you money so that you can go full time. And depending, mm -hmm. depending on how much time that you go is depending on how much money they give you. When I applied to receive my compensation to go to school, they, the government paid me for myself mm -hmm. and they paid me for my two children. They would not pay me for my husband because he was the man. He was the breadwinner. He was the head of the house. Uh, so women only got paid for themselves and for their children, not for their spouse. About four years after I graduated, and I did get a BA degree in marine biology, mm -hmm. after I graduated, the government did compensate me for all of the monies that I was supposed to have gotten. Mm -hmm. Because again, the rules changed and, and we were, um, the women in the military were recognized as 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 re active duty equal to the men. Mm -hmm. so. And just for the record, where did you go to college? Uh, well, I started in Washington College in Virginia, and then Dan went to the Philippines, so I changed to Laverne, mm -hmm. and I went to Laverne College in the Philippines. They had a, a branch, and then after that, we went back to California, so I finished and I got my degree at Laverne College in California. Did you do anything with your uh, bachelor's? No, mm -hmm. I, I did not. We moved so much, and to be a marine biologist, it usually have to be, be near water. Mm -hmm. However, the degree did help me to get, I, I was worked in banking, mm -hmm. and because of my degree, I was able to get in at the um, with financing and mm -hmm. mortgage loans and things like that. Are you still in that field? I'm retired, and I did retire from financing. Yes. All right. So you're mentioning Philippines, Vietnam, California. Um, any place in particular that stands out in your mind? No. Mm -hmm. all, in all honesty. I think we have the best country in the whole world, and Dan and I and our children have gone from coast to coast a number of times. Every place that we have ever been in, and my children have said the same thing, there's always something that's really beautiful in each part of the country, and just, for, just to pick one part or one thing would be very difficult. Now, you mentioned your two children. I believe one of them entered the military? Uh, our son entered the military. He went into the Navy. Mm -hmm. And how long did he serve? For three years. And his name? James, James. D. Hubbard, Jr. And you also have a grandson yes. currently stationed in Iraq. In Iraq. Mm -hmm. And his name is James Anthony Hubbard. And is he Marine? Army. 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 Okay. And do you come back to uh, this area? We do. We come back at least once a year, sometimes mm -hmm. a couple of times. The rest of my family, other than my twin brother, live here. Mm -hmm. So they, in fact, my sister lives in Natick, and, and I have nieces in Marlboro, and mm -hmm. yeah, they both live in, no, Bedford. Mm -hmm. And I understand you're going to be up here later this year for your 50th high school reunion. In, in September, yeah. I can't mm. believe it's been that long. And you probably may get to see parts of the old high school get torn down. 
because it's ma uh, the making way for the new high school. Yeah, yep. I understand, though, that we are going to have, uh, in the old cafeteria, that we're mm -hmm. going to be able to have lunch there and see the old school before they tear it down. That's going to bring back some memories. Oh, yeah. Now, aside from your twin brother, did any member of your class uh, join the military? Did you keep in touch with them? No. No? No, not to my knowledge. I'm sure some of them did, but to my knowledge, um, I didn't ever meet any of them. Mm -hmm. And you, um, aside from traveling a great deal, did you join any service organizations? Legion, VFW? No. No? Um, we, we just moved so much that I didn't. Dan was, um, he, he joined the Marine Corps League, mm -hmm. and I used to help out there. We did for 10 years. We had a, a unit, the Young Marines. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, a, it's a national organization, and the kids go from eight years old up to 21, mm -hmm. graduating high school at 21, whichever comes first. And we had that unit for 10 years. Mm. That, was, that was really great. And we do keep in touch with some of the, the kids. A lot of them have gone into the Marine Corps when they, when they graduate. Mm -hmm. Is there anything else you would like to say uh, for those who are going to be watching this tape? I think that the military, even with all of the problems that we're having right now with the war, mm -hmm. I think it's it is really a great thing to do. It helps the kids to grow and to learn to be independent. And not only that, medical right now is so much up in the air. Um, even Medicare and all, you know, there's, there's so mm -hmm. many rules and, and the, the, like they're trying to change things. So I know a lot of people in my age group right now we're kind of nervous about what's going to happen to Social Security and Medicare. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I do use the VA. Mm -hmm. It, The VA, as far as I'm concerned, is the best medical available. Mm -hmm. um, I had breast cancer and they did a fabulous job. They, they, they treat, when we go into the VA, I feel that I'm treated like a person. And they're, they're really thankful, the, the staff. They're always saying, thank you for your service. I'm, I'm glad that you served. Uh, prior to going into the, using the VA system, I did, I had a couple of surgeries in civilian mm -hmm. hospitals. And you know, the first thing they were interested in was the insurance and um, it was like I was a number, I didn't count. I was mm -hmm. just another person. Um, and then in the VA, because we do travel a lot, mm -hmm. we use the VA system here in Massachusetts. We've used it in Alaska. We've used it in Virginia. Maybe eight or ten states. Mm -hmm. And whenever we go into any of the VAs, we just give them our ID card, our, our VA ID. And they can pull up our records for every facility that we've been mm -hmm. in. And you know, when you travel, it's, it's like if, if I go to a civilian emergency room here, and then I get sick and I go to a civilian emergency room in Virginia, they'll probably do all the same tests because mm -hmm. they don't have a follow-up. The VA is fabulous. It has the best mm -hmm. follow-up. So between that and the medical and everything, I, I really think that, that it's, it's a shame that we have to be over fighting wars and mm -hmm. However, when Dan was in Nam, and he said, and a lot of the other men, you know what, they were thankful that they were over there fighting mm -hmm. instead of over here fighting because, mm -hmm. you know, we were safe, and our military does keep us safe. Mm -hmm. Well, Joyce Tartarini Hubbard, it has been wonderful talking with you. Thank you for your participation in the Veterans Oral History Project. Thank, Thank you. you.